chapter 12, lesson 3, divide polynomials. Now we're going to go through this kind of quickly, but dividing polynomials is when you're dividing a term like this by either a monomial like this or a poly another polynomial. We're going to start off with the easiest method, and that's when you're dividing um, a term like this, a, a, an expression like that, by a monomial. And what we're going to do is we're going to break it down like this. This is just as a fraction. We're going to rewrite it as all over negative 5x. And then we're going to try and simplify it. If you look here, we're going to break it down into three separate fractions. And then we're going to simplify as we could. Because 15x cubed divided by negative 5x is equal to negative 3x squared. And that's just simplifying by factors the way we've done before. And negative 10x squared divided by negative 5x, that's going to give us 2x. And then negative 20x divided by negative 5x is going to give us 4. Now another way of doing it is by using long division. And the way that you need to think about it is this. You're dividing this into this, just as you would any division problem. With any division problem, you could have a remainder, you could not have a remainder, but we'll see. The point of it is, is that though what you're doing is you're trying to take that divisor and change it into the term here by multiplication. So the way I would do that is I'd say, okay, well, negative 5, how do I change negative 5 into 15x? I'm going to multiply it by negative 3x squared. That's going to give me 15x cubed. And then this one here. I'm going to then subtract it out. I'm going to bring down the negative 10x squared. And now I need to figure out how do I change negative 10x, how do I change um, negative 5x here into negative 10x, and that's going to be multiplied by 2x. It's going to be 0, and then I'm going to bring down the final term, negative 20x. And then how do I change negative 5x into negative 20x? That's by multiplying by 4. And that's how you end up with that expression. So this is the whole answer. So let's look at this problem here. I'm not going to write it all the, out the way that the subtraction mode I was before, but what I'm doing is I'm dividing negative 14p cubed, divided by, or excuse me, subtracting 35p squared from that and adding 42p from that. So I'm figuring out how to change this 7p value into each of those. How do I change 7p into 14p cubed? I'm going to multiply by 2p squared. How do I change 7p into negative 35p squared? I'm going to multiply by negative 5p. How do I change uh, 7p into 42p? I'm going to multiply by 6. And that's going to be your actual final answer here. Another way to look at it is doing the division piece. I'm going to do that with this one here. One thing to keep track of is really making sure that your negative signs are correct and your positive signs are correct. Because you, uh, every time you do division, one of the important steps is subtraction, and uh, you've got to have the same sign in order for it to work for subtraction. So if I have here this, and negative 3t is what I'm dividing into there. So the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out how to change negative 3t into 15t cubed. What I do by that is I, how do I change the number into, into 15? I change it by multiplying by negative 5. How do I change t into t cubed? By multiplying by t squared. When I do that, I'm going to end up with 15t cubed. 0, bring down the 6t squared. So now I have to figure out how do I change the negative 3t into 6t squared. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and add that. I have to multiply by a subtraction number. So I'm going to go ahead and write that like that uh, because the signs have to be the same. It's going to be 2t. Because 2t, negative 2t times negative 3t is equal to 6t squared. It's going to be 0. Bring down this, it's going to be minus 18t. 
And now I'm up to the last step. So how do I change negative 3t into negative 18t? I'm going to add and I'm going to multiply by 6. Because 6 times negative 18 is going to be negative 18. I've got no t's to multiply by, so that's going to give me 0. So my final answer is going to be negative 5t squared plus, excuse me, not plus, because we've got that subtraction. Okay, it's a negative sign t. I could keep it as plus, and then a negative number. But that seems kind of awkward. So that's going to be my answer. Now, when you're multiplying, uh, when, actually, when you're dividing by a polynomial, it gets a little bit more sticky. You can't do it. You can't do it the way that we started with, with using, setting it up as fractions, because it just won't simplify the right way. But what I can do is I can go ahead and use the long division method. When I use the long division method, there's a couple of important steps that you really need to keep in mind. And we're going to walk through this problem just to see how it works. First of all, 2x, I'm trying to change 2x minus 5 into 6x squared minus 13x. Okay, I can't do that with the first term. I'm just going to put a 0 up there because I don't like to have nothing in front there. But I can, if I multiply it by 3x, this whole term here, I multiply that whole term by 3x, then I'm going to get 6x squared. And that's what I'm looking for because I need to get rid of that first term before I can move on to the second term and third term and so on. So when I multiply 3x times 2x, I end up with 6x squared. But then I also have to remember to multiply by that minus 5. So 3x squared times minus 5 is going to give me this piece here, negative 15x. So this will end up being 0 here, and that's great. That's what my plan was. But now I've got negative 13x minus a negative 15x. So minus a negative, that's going to be a positive. So I'm going to end up with 2x. This is the part where you really need to make sure to keep track of your negative signs. So it's going to be 2x. Then I bring down that 2. And what I end up with, I now have to figure out a way of getting rid of that 2. The way I do that is by multiplying by 1. So plus 1. So 1 times 2x minus 5 is just 2x minus 5. And so then I can subtract out the, uh, the x's. And I'm left with 2 minus negative 5, which is going to be 7. Now, important thing to realize is that this whole problem is going to be, the answer to this whole problem is going to be 3x plus 1, because that's this part here. So that's that part right there, 3x plus 1. But then it's also, we've got this 7, because there's a 7 there, just like with remainders when you do regular, uh, regular, multiplication and division with math. Then we got that too because that was the divisor. You think about it, it makes perfect sense because if we had the following problem, if we had uh, 10 divided by 3, it would be 0 and that would be 3, that would be 9. And then it would be 3 and 1 third. The reason why it's 3 and 1 third is I've got my 3 up there. I've got my 3 as my divisor. That's what that part is. And then I've got my remainder right there. So let's look at one of these. I'm going to do this one right here. I'll set it up. Okay, so the first step is I need to change, figure out a way of multiplying out this. Um, I can't do anything with the first term because I need two terms to work with because I'm working with a polynomial with two terms. So I can't do anything with that. So now I'm going to go ahead and do uh, see what I can do with the second term. It has to be uh, 3 because 3 times 8 is 24, and that's what I'm trying to get to. And it has to also be x because x times x is going to be x squared. And then I have to multiply that 3x times the negative 1 as well. So I'm going to have 0, negative 19 minus negative, uh, negative 3x is going to be equal to, it's going to be equal to negative 16x plus 6. Bring down that. 
So now my problem is, what do I do? Go ahead, and I need to now move over. I now need to change the negative 6, or change the 8x to the negative 16x. So I'm going to subtract 2. Negative 2 times 8x is going to be negative 16x. Negative 2 times negative 1 is going to be plus 2. So this is going to be 0. This is going to be 6 minus 2. Don't fall for the trap I nearly did there, which was going ahead and adding the 2. Um, 6 minus 2, which is going to be 4. So my final answer for this division problem is going to be 3x minus 2 plus 4 by 8x minus 1. That is my remainder. Now we'll spend a bit of extra time on this in class, but this here is a special type of problem here. If you notice, there's no y term. There's no y term. There's only a y squared term and then a constant. And we need to have the y term to make this uh, division method work. So the way we're going to rewrite this problem is we're going to rewrite it as 16y squared plus 0y minus 7. And then we're going to divide it the way that we normally would, which is exactly demonstrated there. First of all, we're going to figure out a way of changing the 4y into 16y squared, and that's how you multiply by 4y there. And then the 4y is also multiplied by the 3y, that's how I end up with this 12y. And then when I do the subtraction, I end up with negative 12y, because 0 minus 12y is going to be negative 12y. And now I figure out a way of changing this expression here, the 4y into negative 12y, so I'm going to multiply by negative 3. Negative 3 times 4y is going to be negative 12y, and negative 3 times 3 is going to be negative 9. And when I subtract that up, I'm going to end up with 2. So my final answer is going to be this. I'm going to do one more and one more of these as an example. I know this is pretty complicated but um, in a longer video, but that's because uh, just a lot of detail here. So first of all, I'm dividing into this number, 4x squared. So I have to add a zero term, or an x term. That's the first thing. Second thing, this is not set up correctly. I need to go ahead and change that to 2x minus 5. 2x minus 5. So now I can do the problem. How do I change 2x? I can't do it with this first one, so I need to move over. How do I change 2x into 4x? By multiplying by 2x. 2x times 2x, that's going to give me 4x squared. 2x times negative 5 is going to give me negative 10x. I subtract it out, I'm going to end up with 10x. Then bring down to 25. Now, how do I change the, uh, the 2x minus 5 into, or at least the 2x term into 10x? I'm going to multiply it by 5. When I do that, I'm going to end up with 10x. 5 times 2 is 10, and it's x minus 25. And this one works out perfectly. So it's going to be 0. So my final answer is going to be 2x plus 5 is my final answer for this problem. That works out perfectly well because actually this is a, a perfect square factoring thing of the other one. So that makes sense why that would work. Okay, very, very last one now. I set these up now the correct way. I added the 0x term there. You can see I had an extra term there and that was just the 0x. I can do that because it has no value. So now what I'm doing is I'm changing. I can't do anything with this first term because I need two terms. So... How do I change 4x to 16x? By multiplying by 4x. When I do that, I'm going to end up with 4x times 4x, that's 16x squared. 4x times 7 is 28x. Do the subtraction, end up with negative 28x minus 46. So now I have to figure out how to, how to get rid of that negative 28x. 
So that's going to be um, it's going to be a subtraction thing. It's going to be subtracting seven. Negative seven times four x is going to be negative twenty-eight x. Negative seven times seven is going to be negative forty-nine. Okay, and when I do the subtraction, I'm going to end up with zero here, and then I'm going to end up with three here. So my final answer in this case is going to be 4x minus 7 plus 3 over 4x minus 7. Yeah, that's kind of funny how that worked out that way. Um, so that is how these problems work. And good luck working on them.